So going into tomorrow, I kind of want to give the Bulls the benefit of the doubt. When I mean Bulls, not the buy bias, but individual names, right? Names that had a big move that are just consolidating now. AMAT officially now is consolidating. Texas Instruments officially now is consolidating. You look at Boeing, right? Boeing is not that far. Second close in a row. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday everybody. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's talk about the tape. So if you watched last night's video, um, you know, I, I kind of wanted to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Granted, we're underneath supply and all that bad stuff. But towards the end of the day yesterday, if you guys remember yesterday's session, we kind of had these, these, these pretty aggressive spikes kind of intraday, and then they would fade off and they had these really big aggressive spikes again. And if you remember last night's video, you know, we were talking about this 317 levels. At this point for the Bulls, they just have to capture, you know, little baby battles. You're not trying to win the war. It's like, you know, the little baby battles in between that's going to justify movements until we start uh, capturing big macro areas. And although today, you know, we, we failed once again. And again, when you woke up this morning, uh, the cues were down. Everything was down. Everything looked lousy again. It looked terrible again. And you say to yourself, oh, God, here we go again. You know, the market did okay today. And you're not going to see that by the scoreboard. Um, by no means am I turning around for tomorrow's session and say, hey, this is very, very bullish. But I am saying there's opportunity there to the, to the long side for tomorrow's session. Not for everything, okay? And we'll, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. The one thing that I really liked what I saw today, and again, remember, little baby battles, non-macro war. What I did like what I saw the Bulls did today was, number one, when they gap lower today, there was no opening range lows confirmed. That's a plus, right? That's a very, very big plus. Names that look like they're about to completely fall off a cliff this morning, uh, like a Tesla's of the world, like a Roku's of the world, uh, even Zoom, right? And Zoom, we'll show you exactly. There was a two-part uh, setup for Zoom. It did the first part today, and it rallied a little too much for the second part, but we'll kind of get to that in a second. So what I like today, the stocks that looked absolutely atrocious, just, just ready to fall off a cliff, they kind of held. I mean, using the word held maybe is a little bit too liberal to say, but they didn't fall off a cliff. I think that's the nicest way of saying it. And they started slowly but surely starting moving its way upwards. Now, if you combine that to kind of what I was looking for for last night's video, kind of say, well, I want to give the bulls kind of the benefit of the doubt. They kind of woke up. Now, not everything, right? Uh, Amazon's of the world, still dead money. And the BYNDs are still dead money. And the Apples of the world and the Netflix of the world and pretty much everything, right? Everything is kind of dead money. And if you're trading from the lawn side only, and if you are trying to uh, swing trade a market that is under supply, which is crazy to say to begin with, but if you are swinging a market that's underneath supply, you're kind of having a hard time of it as well. But what I did like what I saw today was the stocks that were really dead in the water without a pulse, they woke up, again, not all of them. And if you look at this area here, the, the Qs, right, NASDAQ 100, they did reclaim this supply zone right here, or actually this demand zone right here, and kind of reclaim the five-day moving average as well. Now, if you've been watching this broadcast for a long time, you kind of know where I'm going next with this, right? The five-day moving average, one of the most underutilized, one of the most underappreciated uh, technical study that most people don't use. I do, right? I look at the five-day as the shortest-term sentiment that you can possibly have. It really does show that who's in control of at least the short term, five, 10 day moving averages, those are the two shortest. So the fact that the, the Qs did reclaim the five day moving average, I wanna give them one more day, one more day, right? Not to say, I'm not, believe me, I'm totally conscious of where we are. I get the fact that we haven't reclaimed the 317 area. Forget about talking about the 50 day moving average, we haven't even reclaimed the 317 level. 
but baby steps, right? I, I kind of want to look at this, 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 this marcher or any potential road to recover as baby steps. Do I need baby steps? Do I want baby steps? Do I need a, a market to go higher? I don't. I like it though. I think everybody feels better in a bull market or at least a bullish scenario. I think there's a lot more liquidity. If you've been watching this broadcast for a long time, liquidity equals market participants. The market goes down, there's less market participants, there's less liquidity. That's why stocks go down faster. When a market has a lot of juice, and a lot of liquidity, a lot of personality, there's much more participants. Everybody wants to trade the market. So we always want a, a, a bullish scenario. We don't get it, but we want it. So I think going into tomorrow's session, are we technically anywhere that I love? Absolutely not, right? I, again, this is the big area, at least for the quote unquote baby step scenario. 317 is still the big area here. We got rejected here once, we got rejected here twice, but at some point you have to start looking for clues. Maybe there's a seller strike, maybe there's a short-term seller strike, maybe we can get more than a one, two hour rally. Maybe there's something more, even if we don't reclaim macro levels, maybe there's something more that we can look at, that we can find some clues, that we can find some value. And if you are looking for uh, if you are looking for some value here, I think you have to go back to the semiconductors, right? I really do. And you, you look at the semi names. Uh, you look what Tesla did, and we'll show you in a second. You see what Roku did today. Um, granted, a lot of stocks still look like crap, and they didn't participate. We're talking about the ones who did, kind of like the the shining light. Maybe they translate more into tomorrow. Maybe they don't. But at least you have to start somewhere. And at any given point, believe me, I know where we are, and I've said this a hundred different times, I understand we're still at supply. So if we don't get that burst, okay, if we don't have that life, the continuation life that we saw tomorrow, it's very, very easy to switch sides and start looking at opening range lows. But the big, the, the big to do, what I did like, what I saw today, names like I was looking at, um, you know, overnight, you know, names that I was looking at uh, that it needed a second day to kind of go lower, they made their initial low and they never kind of confirmed, which is a good, again, maybe the, the, the sellers are tired, maybe God is on their side. We don't know, right? We don't know. We don't know what evil force there is. I don't know if my mother-in-law is involved, basically speaking. So we want to see what happens next. So going into tomorrow, I kind of want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. When I mean bulls, not the buy biased, but individual names, right? Names that had a big move, that are just consolidating now. AMAT officially now is consolidating. Texas Instruments officially now is consolidating. You look at Boeing, right? Boeing is not that far. It's second close in a row uh, above the 10 day moving average. Remember the 10 day moving average is the birth of the trade. You know, maybe it starts taking out this channel here and really wakes up. Not really a lot of um, meaningful option buyers in the crowd yet, but hey, that changes very, very quickly. Even GameStop, and it was you know a really aggressive pivot today on GameStop. We'll get to that in a second. But GameStop also second day in a row. Not that this is the barometer of the market. And this is not really my drug of choice. But I know a lot of people do love this drug of choice. The different strokes for different folks. So there's some definitely value to the upside. I wouldn't call it a bullish scenario for tomorrow, but I wouldn't call it bearish either. And I think if you do your homework tonight and concentrate on the groups. Uh, like the semiconductors, um, like the software names, okay? Um, there's, some de there's definitely some areas to pick and choose that you can uh, definitely capitalize. And when you look at today's pivots and you saw the names that woke up, right? These are the names, right? R literally, Tesla looked like it was about an inch away to falling out, completely exploded, reclaimed the five-day moving average. Remember what I said a couple of minutes ago, right? Five-day moving average is a short-term sentiment. Maybe it has one more day and gets into the 650s, right? Got to give it the benefit of the doubt. It's, it's Tesla. Maybe Roku, right? Roku did exactly the same thing as Tesla. Was an inch away of them really getting destroyed, right? And we've been trading this thing. Uh, a couple of days ago, I traded to the short side. Today, I traded to the long side. You know, this thing reclaimed the five-day moving average. What if it confirms tomorrow? Maybe it has one more day into the 30s. So that's kind of my point. You look at names like Tulo, for example, and you'll see some of the same, same similarities. So, you know, look, I'm not planning for a bullish day tomorrow. I'm not thinking about a bullish day tomorrow, but it's, it's there. It's on the radar. And in case we, again, do the same thing that we did today, not confirm any macro lows, um, especially in the first candle candle off the 10 o'clock lows tomorrow, and we start confirming today's channels, 
I do believe there's some selective stocks uh, that can wake up tomorrow, you know, like uh, a Tesla follow through, like a Roku follow through, maybe like a Tulo, maybe these semiconductors come back. Again, when you look at the rest of the groups, and I actually had a trade that I, I didn't make any, any money on today, like on NVIDIA, and you can see why. It got rejected right back into supply. And the moral of the story is most stocks look like this, but some actually do, for example, look like this and look like, right, and look like this, right, right on the five day and look like this. So there is some potential. We want to keep an eye on it. We obviously, like we say every single day, this is our plan, right? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If the market uh, gaps up and everything craps and dies and, you know, we, we, you know, we're going to be shorting opening range lows. So it's not the point of, you know, this is going to happen. This is the point as well. I'm looking out for it because now it's in front of us and all it takes is one decent confirmation and we could get a second push uh, of these stocks. So we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. So uh, let's talk about today's pivots. And again, you can see right away the names that I was putting on the short side, they had their initial move and never confirmed down, which is which was kind of what started today's day. And if you again, if you look at the NASDAQ, you know, it's down in the day. There's nothing about it that's great. Uh, the, the, the Dow is down in the day. There's nothing about it but great. But if you look at the technicals, the Dow is basing, right? Had a big move. Now it's basing. The S&P is basing, had a big move. Now it's going a little bit sideways, digestion. So now let's see if the NASDAQ 100 could actually wake up or at least players in that game. Anyway, guys, so uh, let's talk about it. So first first pivot of the day, uh, I said, look, I'm not day drinking. I promise you, I give you my word. Uh, GME uh, GameStop is rejected 194 several times. This is on the 60 minute channel. It needs to reclaim. And here was GameStop. Congratulations. Like, it's not my thing. Like, I'm not going to trade GameStop. But if this is your drug of choice, this is your drug of choice. And congratulations for all you guys. Cheyenne, great call on GameStop. Here is the 194. Got rejected once. Got rejected twice. Got rejected three times. The fourth time was the charm. Went from 194 all the way uh, to 203. Great call. Great. Absolutely great call. Again, not every single pivot is for everybody. Um, I'm personally not a GameStop guy. Um, if you guys are, hey, congratulations. The pivot's either going to go or it's not going to go. That's the beautiful thing about trading pivots. Nobody needs to hold your hand. As long as they confirm and you feel comfortable, do you, playboy, right? It's either going to go or it's not going to go. And here is kind of uh, where I knew the market was going to hold up a little bit. So Zoom, you know, here is, here is my notes on Zoom. Uh, might be a two-day play. Uh, 305 below this below could finally flush. So it flushed down to, flush is maybe, maybe an aggressive word. It went down to like 302, right? Went down to 302. But you notice here, here I said, the reason why is this two-day play. There's a daily Bollinger Band at 30150 that's going to provide some temporary support. So obviously, for the future, if this thing starts building below 301, it would finally go. And here's kind of my point. And this is where it's so important to understand where the supply zones are, where the demand zones are, so you're not shorting into demand, so you're not buying into supply. So I knew this band was here, and it, it finally hit this band and bounced a little bit. Now, the, for the near future, once it confirms this band, and maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's the next day, or maybe never, but the point is now we have a definitive line in the sand, and if Zoom confirms this channel here, then you can see uh, how much room you have left. But again, this, it's so important to understand. Uh, Jumia up on a closing offering. If it gives up its gains, 31.50-31. If it builds below, it can flush. That was the good news. It came back down to like $32. It almost went red on the day. And it came back up. Again, these are little signs you want to see that at least if there's maybe a seller strike. That's a good thing, right? If you're a, a, a permable, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, Texas Instrument needs to build. Uh, needs to confirm that 89 level. It didn't do so, but I still like it, right? I, I still like it. it. It went from 88 to 88.50 and it kind of just stood around off that area. It's still valid, okay? And that's kind of my point. There's a lot of names that are just sitting there right now that if they do confirm, could wake up and, and you have to start looking at the stronger stocks. Uh, Boeing never confirmed. I, I still like this 255 level. Uh, BYND got hit, uh, 125, 40, 125. It builds below, can flush. Obviously, the bull market, well, the bull market, the, the bias today kind of saved it. So it took out that 25 and a half, 25 area, uh, only went to 23 and a half. And this is kind of we, another example that it didn't, again, take out those opening range lows, which a lot of names that got hit really, really hard, they kind of had the same thing. But at least, again, we have another definitive bottom uh, to play with in the future. Um, Google, I said, look, just in case we rally, and that was the whole point of last night's video. Just in case we rally, 
Uh, it needs 2050 to, to build. Again, not the biggest move in the world, but here was Google, right? Here was Google. It took out the 2050 and it ran up about 13, 14 points before kind of you know digesting the rest of the day. But that's what you're expecting. We talked about that in previous videos. You're not looking for that 90 point move. Right? At least it, there's, no, there's no way you're going to get that big of a move. Uh, when the, pretty much everything is on the supply. So you have to kind of take everything to cash flow. But, you know, nice little move on Google. Uh, Microsoft, again, didn't get to that 37 level. I still like it. It's, it's gotten rejected there three times. Uh, Spotify only went down like a dollar change. Uh, never, you know, never confirmed uh, the opening range low. Same thing with DraftKings, never confirmed the opening range low. Uh, AMAT, again, this is a big number here coming up here. And, you know, this was my first trade of the day, this Roku. I said, look, just in case we rally, fingers crossed, right? Just in case we rally, 305 needs to build. So here was Roku. Uh, the first move was like two and change, but you could see, you know, you could see the move here. Here's the 305, right? 305, 305, 305. It took out the 305, went right into supply and ultimately got really, really strong. Uh, hey, if it confirms again tomorrow, you know, who knows, maybe it starts taking out this this whole channel here. So, you know, nice move there on Roku. Uh, let's see here. Roku, Roku, Roku. Um, yeah, you know, GameStop. Take on the way up. First supply is 200, went to 202. Uh, take on the way up on Google. Uh, Facebook. Here's a, here's a, here's the most interesting part. Facebook led this, you know, was, was so strong for the last few days. Not so strong today. Never got to that area. Congratulations to all you guys who caught Tesla today. Uh, 606, 607 has a sneaky area that needs to build in case we rally, right? It was the whole point. In case, in case, in case. 611, next area to reclaim. In a perfect world, it sees 16. Not only did this thing see 16, Tesla absolutely exploded. Uh, here was the 606 area right here, the sneaky channel here. It took out 606, took out 611, and it traded right to 617, and then all of a sudden it lost its mind and traded almost to 640. Congratulations for you guys uh, who did catch that big, big move. Uh, and it, again, if it confirms tomorrow, we could still get one more day. And this is kind of, I, I screwed up NVIDIA. Um, I bought NVIDIA. It didn't move it. It really, it ran up a, excuse me, I, I bought a little late. Um, it went up like 50 cents or so. And I was sitting there and I was sitting there and I go, you know, the futures are rallying a little bit. Let me give it a little more room. Let me get a little more room. And it didn't do absolutely nothing. And I wound up losing like 70 cents on the trade. Not a big deal one way or another, but it does really show the difference between stocks that got juiced compared to everything else uh, that did not. Uh, and yeah, huge spike on Tesla. Uh, yeah, and this is my whole point. It got rejected here. It wasn't 508. It was 518. Uh, 518. So I bought it a little bit late. It only ran to 519, which kind of sucked. Uh, so 624 next supply, yada, 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 yada. So yeah. So going into tomorrow, you know, again, I'm going to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. I want to see, um, you know, if they can give, you know, they can wake some other names up. But if not, we have a pretty good list of names that we are watching for tomorrow. Uh, we'll see. Okay. We'll see bulls. Again, nobody's calling for a bullish market, 500 point rally. But if you're going to make some moves to the upside, Maybe tomorrow's a good place to start. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.